Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the beautiful outdoors. And today, I once again, we are going ice fishing. Walleye fishing is a target. Maybe some perch, maybe some incidental pike, like the last couple videos as well. Seems like all three species are snapping a little bit for me, but nothing's been super crazy. This is my fifth day on the ice right now. And this is my fifth different spot that I fished. I like to venture around first ice. I usually don't fish on the same spot all the time. I like to move around, see what's going on. And if I find something hot, then maybe I'll winter camp that area at some point. But right now I got my spud bar out already. I went out first, made sure everything was good. And now I'll head out with all my gear. I am taking a shock today. It might get windy. I don't know if I'm gonna set it up to start with. I might just fish outside to start with. <laughs> I said start with now three times in a row. And uh, maybe transition to the shack in a little bit. Or maybe I'll just kind of put out the live scope, find where I want to be, and then set up the shack. We'll, we'll see. Anyways, let's haul the gear out. I got a full load today, that's for sure. That is a huge load of stuff. Thankfully, I only got a little bit of snow and that's mostly ice to pull it through. There's no secret where I am right now. If you are familiar with Lake of the Prairies at all, this is the Roblin Bridge. I fish here once in a while. It is definitely a popular spot. There's always some current you have to watch out for take your time there's a nice old road that goes all the way across there is an app called avenza apps and there's a map on there from angler's edge mapping that you can pick a spot and find it somewhere along the river channel hot tip along the river channel is usually a good spot so we are going to go get set up like i said i already got my spud bar out we're going to make our way there set up somewhere Maybe somewhere like right there and uh, get her done. Let's do it. Be a YouTuber, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm getting near the end of hauling out by hand season and I'll be, I'll be using my side-by-side -side and snowmobile as soon as there's enough snow on the lake as well. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Come on. As soon as I get through this harsh snow here, it'll be an easy pull. So I decided to set everything up now before it gets windy because I know I'm going to be fishing to the dark. I found my spot, went around with live scope and uh, kind of found an edge of an area. I'll show some on the graph later of where I kind of ended up with the structure. But I could get everything set up and I brought my normal flasher with me and I can go out here and hole hop while it's nice. But for now, we're going to uh, get everything set up. Okay, we are officially set up in fishing. I've got a bunch of holes drilled all around the shack too, that if I see fish somewhere out there, like up to 65 feet away, pretty much, I think I drilled about 10 holes-ish probably. And if I see any fish out there, I can just grab a rod. I've got a flasher out there already and I can go fish outside as well. So we'll be covering inside as well as outside. I don't quite need to look to 105 feet. We can probably go a little bit less than that. 75 should be good. And yeah, we'll keep live scope on forward mode and see what happens. But I've got fish down here already. And you can see I got a little bit of a drop off there at 40 feet away. I'm sitting in 25 feet of water right now. And there's fish. 
There's fish coming over. I like this that I've got fish right right at the start of the day. It's got a rattle bait right now. I might change to a spoon or something here right away. I'll turn my gain down. I'll clean that up a little bit there. Yeah, things are good. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Just cleaning my glass and I got a fish coming towards me. Oh, be a perch, be a perch. Be a perch, because you could be a tank if you're a perch. What do we got? Small walleye. Oh, oh, oh. I was hoping for a perch, but it's a tiny walleye for our first fish of the day. Can only go up from here. You can go. Okay, see ya. 50 feet away. I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna go out there. Oh, yeah, come on. Okay, well, my plan worked. <laughs> Marked a fish, come out, drop down one of the holes I had pre-drilled, and yeah, it's a nice waltzer. If I notice a pile of walleyes out further, it's pretty easy for me to move the shack over at some point too. It's not that far, but I'm at 19 feet here. This is the top of the shelf. We're gonna measure him because it looks like he might be an eater and if he's too big, we'll release him in the shack here. Oh geez, oh geez. There's a fish on my dead stick now too. <laughs> okay, okay buddy. That is funny. That is funny. That is a nice little double header this one's too big for sure i'd say well maybe we don't have to uh move the shack over <laughs> well <laughs> come over and the dead stick is tipped over in the shack this one's too big for sure so we'll get him back here quick and i believe the other one's a keeper but one more quick show off but a nice 20 incher there and then this guy here like i said is gonna be a a keeper yeah he's a perfect 17 inches so he will go in the bucket that's a fun little double header right there okay we're officially set up again live minnow back on the jackknife jig if you are looking for some live minnows at lake of the prairies they're harder and harder to get right now lowen at lost meadows has live minnows available for now anyway until he runs out i'm not sure but he does have live minnows available and he also has winter accommodations if you want to come fish Lake the Prairies. I am literally about 500 yards from his place, probably, maybe less. You can literally just, you don't have to bring, you don't have to bring a quad or a sled or anything like that. You can literally walk on the ice right from there. Plus he does have um, shacks to rent as well. So if you don't even have a shack or anything like that, he's got shelters available. Another place on the lake that has shacks for rent is further down south at Prairie Eye Guiding. There's no accommodations down there, but if you come up and stay in the Russell area or Mississippi, you can go out with Prairie Eye Guiding. They have shacks available for rent as well. And I think they're doing winter guiding. I'm not I'm not 100% sure like whether they, they have the outfit to do it in the winter, but it might just be for them. It might be like they'll go out, they'll get your shack going, uh, stock it full of wood the fire going holes drilled and get everything set up for you take you out there and then you're kind of on your own but they have shacks available as well so lost meadows and prairie eye guiding both have shacks available at lake of the prairies highly recommend either of them both great options one's more focuses on the north end and the other one focuses on the south end so two great like i said great options for lake of the prairies it's one of my favorite little walleye lakes I'm not gonna lie well i'm still seeing fish out there at like 50, 55 feet. This one's almost 60 feet. I'm going to throw a finicky fooler out there for a little bit and see what happens from that. As soon as I get out there, the marks are gone like pretty quick. So they're clearly moving through and possibly on that shelf. I've got lots of little fish underneath me, but I think they're mostly perch. Like they're tiny, 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 tiny. They could be just small little perch. So let's get a finicky fooler out there with uh, same thing. I'm just going to use that jig, the jackknife jig, and I'll just fish one hole in here. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Let's get her set up. Fish coming this way. It's going to get an underwater camera possibly on that. 
on my uh, finicky fluoro up there. At some point, but I got a fish coming over here. Uh, there's one coming from below me. If it's a perch, it's big. If it's a perch, it's big. But I feel like it might be a tiny walleye. Be a big perch. It's a big perch. It's a big perch. Yep, come on. Come on. Yes. Jumbo perch. I am a little bit deeper. I'm about 24 feet. And his air bladder is coming out here. So I'm going to keep him, even though I'd normally let the bigger perch go. That's a good eater at uh, 12 inches. So we'll keep him 12 incher, but because of his air bladder is the reason why we're, we're keeping him. When, you're, when you catch perch deeper, you don't really have much of a, a choice. It's better to, better to harvest them for sure. Okay, I just tried putting the underwater camera out. It's too murky today changes day to day can change the area of the lake that i'm at normally on this lake it is pretty good but right now i have a little bit more of a, a murky area so we'll just won't put it out today and we'll we'll save it for another day right now i move my finicky fluor out there i can't really see it i i can see it but it's a little bit foggy oh there it is okay so move my finicky fluor out there eye level so i like about these shacks or all the windows are the same you can really see tip ups but before i had it out there i had it on this Pretty handy, handy dandy rod holder right here from Eskimo. That's called an e-hub system right here. They have a bunch of different uh, accessories that you can attach here. It's so slick. So I got the rod holder. So I had it set up there with the dead stick with the minnow. They have a little table here with a phone holder. You can put your phone right into there like that. And yeah. Pretty handy, the e-hub system. I like this setup a lot. I do, be able to see the finicky fooler just right out there. Never used the finicky fooler pile for walleye. And then last year I used it for some, with actually just dead minnows on it even, just some smaller minnows. And a treble it worked really well, but I figured since I have some live minnows right now, I'd use those jackknife jigs, which I'll show off here at some point. I have to remember that I didn't talk about that those or show that off in this video I did in my last video I talked about it a little bit and showed it off but I have to remember that each each video is different and not everybody watches every single video if you want to get all of my tips and tricks though a big thing to do is literally is just to go through all of my videos because I, div I divulge a lot of information but it's not always just in one video sometimes it's one tip here one tip there I make you watch them all there's a, a method to my madness as this little tiny fish is messing with me down here. At my lunch today, salami, crackers, and cheese. Cut it up the night before. Nice little midday on the lake snack. Oh, got this one to eat right off the bottom. The old dirt slurp. The old dirt slurp, maybe another eater. Feels like an eater. Feels like an eater. Feels like fish tacos. Hi, fish tacos. How are you? Oh, yeah. You want to be fish tacos? Okay. We'll come up here. You can be fish tacos. Another one right around that 17-inch mark. So he will be going home in the bucket. You, my friend, are fish tacos. I'm going to switch up to something different for a little bit. This is what I have been using. This is a quarter ounce ice winder from Acme. And I'm running this right now actually on a true grit. 38 medium normally I would use a smoke show for that but I have my smoke show rigged up right here with a hyperglide and I'm going to drop a hyperglide down there for a little bit and I'll probably go back to the spoon again at some point but we're going to play around with some a couple different baits a couple different options hyperglide is such a a good walleye through the ice bait like it's probably one of the most underrated walleye baits i think i've caught so many big walleyes on it oh we just got in from outside and there's a fish coming up to my bait come on oh come on follow it down pound it in the dirt Come on, come eat out of the dirt, bud. We like that, don't you? Might 
it just hardly touched it. Come on. Got him. Got him. Got him from outside and there was a fish coming up to my bait. Oh. It's a pike. How come you were so hard to catch? You little rat. Well, we've now caught all three species again. There's a fish up at that, at my live minnow too right now. Oh, there goes the flag. There goes the flag. Question is, will he still be on there? Or will it be gone? Looks like he's there. The old finicky fooler for walleyes. I like it. I like it. Just a little guy. Just, oh Jesus, big perch. <laughs> big perch. This is shallower, so at least I can release him. He's got that hook swallowed. I brought him in the shack. We're actually gonna keep him. He was, uh, he had that hook pretty swallowed. So another selective harvest situation right here where hooked poorly, we'll keep him. I quite like having the finicky fooler out right now. I might not necessarily put it out at prime time hours just because I feel like I'm going to be so busy in the shack. But it's super simple setup. This is a nice hole cover here which prevents your hole from freezing as well as stops your rod from ever going down the hole. And this just pops out here. Later in the season when you get more snow, you can make a base, a little like area around it and then it won't move around so much. But I'm a huge fan of that. And this is a simple tip up technique where the rod goes in the it's called the finicky fooler <laughs> it goes in the fooler and then uh, when the fish pulls on the line or eats it this will go up the flag will pop up and voila it's a tip up that's not hand over hand right i've used them in a lot of videos in the past if you're not familiar with this product go just go through some of my lake trail videos and pike videos in the last year you'll see me using it even more but you can get them from the States right on their website, Finicky Fooler. And then in Canada, I know Verdon has it in Verdon, Manitoba, Stillwater Adventures, it's called. I love it. And on here I have the Drench, the 39 fiberglass rod from Frostbite, and it's a medium light. It's a good, good dead stick rod. Perfect. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, there's a fish at my live minnow. Oh yeah, he's gonna pop it for sure. I'm gonna go out there now. I feel like he's gonna, he's gonna pop it. Oh yeah, look at that, it's already going. There it goes. Ah, that's nice, smell to see it on the live imaging first. Feels like a walleye, I'd say. Feels decent, not small. I'm trying to get my cover. There we go. There we go. Feels decent. Not huge, not small, but a nice, nice walleye. Nice walleye. That was fun to be able to see it on the live imaging here. I'm just gonna do this right now. It's a lot earlier in the later in the season when there's some snow on the ice with that. Okay. Okay, probably a nice like 20 inch or I won't even take them in. I'll just release them right here. It got stuck in his teeth. <laughs> Open your mouth. The hook's open getting stuck on his teeth. Okay, like I said, about 20 inch or going back. See ya. Back in the shack, locked and loaded, finicky fooler, set up, flag down. And um, if the night bite is more has more action shallower. I might very well just take the camera and go fish out there in the evening. It's nice enough outside. I don't have to be in the shelter. So I'll just go out there with a camera, head camera and the flasher and try to make something happen. But for now, we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing. If the flag goes, we'll go catch a walleye, but we'll, we'll pay attention to the live imaging and see if there's 
more action there than here but so far it's about even i'd say with the the biggest fish being caught inside the shelter so far it's a fish going to my live minnow again i'm gonna get ready because that's gonna go off i can feel it i can feel it She's all over it He's actually, I think he's on at that rod is slightly. Yep, come on. Oh, my bail. I didn't open my bail. <laughs> Clayton, you donkey. I didn't open the bail. For these to work, you have to open your bail. <laughs> the flag popped because it bent over enough, but it's a good thing I was watching the live images. There's a lot nicer fish up here than where I am. That's for sure. Okay. You gonna come out? Turn yourself around? I could grab you. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Next time, Clayton, open the bail. I wonder if I should just move my... I have enough time. You know, the night bite's just gonna start. Like, it's only three. I could just move everything. Drill, drill three holes right here. I feel like this ridge is gonna be the spot. That's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna man up and move over. Come on, lift, lift. Oh, there goes my table. That's not how, that's not working. I thought it would. Uh-oh. <gasps> oh no. Well, what's the chance I still have a working camera? Probably pretty slim, hey? And to top it off, all of like the footage I had will be gone too. This got knocked away. Well, still turns on. That's a good sign, I guess, eh? Still, still turns on. Wonder if I can save that clip. Sometimes I go to media, there was a bad power outage. I can go to the clip and render it. Attempt to recover the data. No, attempt to recover the data. Yes, okay, well, let's see. If this camera survives that fall, I'm gonna be pretty impressed with the camera. I don't deserve what I just, what just happened. That did not go as expected. And I saw it happening and I just I had no way to stop it. I'm not sure what that piece is from. It might have recovered the clip. It recovered the clip. So, <laughs> wow. We'll see how long this lasts. I better get another one in order because usually after a drop like that, something will get messed up. Crazy. Okay, that, let's get this set up because that did not go as well as I thought it was going to. Okay, well, what's done is, what's done is done. I'm gonna have to try to fix this camera tonight. I broke the battery mechanism, I noticed. So, we'll try to fix that up and, yeah. I should have at least dropped my live minnow down while I was doing all that so I could have caught some fish in the process. Oh, poor choice. Bad decisions were made on that one. Well, the only good news about all that, it's still only 3.30, which means I do still have all of my prime time left. So everything happens for a reason. The, on that camera, what broke was the battery release. So I have an older camera. I might be able to, to maybe get that part fixed. If not, I'm not sure how I'm releasing the batteries in the future. <laughs> oh boy. Maybe a screwdriver? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. The mistake I made with that 
was I tried to lift the shelter over everything instead of just like pulling it, taking everything out and then pulling it or else I'd have been fine. When as soon as I lifted it up, the wind, what little wind there was caught it and just wouldn't, I couldn't stop it. And even though I took this camera out, which I thought I had it far enough away from the shelter, it clearly wasn't. And there was just like, I saw it all coming and I, I don't know. I guess if I could go back, I would have like kind of let go of the shelter for a bit and let the wind take it and then grab the camera or something. I don't know. It just like hindsight's always 2020, 20, right? Like, or I should have just tried to pull it back further too, but it was like, it just wasn't, it was not a good thing at all. It was just a poor decision. I always do that after though. Like when something happens, I like replay it in my head of like how I could have avoided it or what I could have did differently even though it's like obviously couldn't can't change it it's like okay if we run into a situation like that again how how are we going to avoid that and number one is just to, i should have moved everything out of the shelter over here and then brought the shelter that's what i should have did live and you learn thankfully i think i saved all the footage which is probably the biggest thing even though there's nothing crazy from today at all but a video is a video sometimes. Come on. I think they're just perch. No, nope, that's not a perch. That is not a perch. If it is, it's a giant perch. <laughs> okay, well maybe, maybe the move will end up being, will be a good thing in the long run. Nice fat, probably 19er. Going back, that one on the hyperglide. I have a feeling I'm gonna get a, a crazy, crazy flurry, I hope. I hope. I haven't had like a insane bite yet this year where it's like one after another. But today's midday bite was definitely better than anything I've had so far. So I feel like it's coming today. And that's why I brought that dead stick in from outside. It's just there's no way to keep up running back and forth once it starts happening. You, you can't be in two places at once. Oh, here we go. Just dropping a spoon down again. Instead of the... Piper hammer. There's a fish coming over here. Might be coming to my live minnow though too. I kind of rather catch it on the spoon, but I'll take it either or. I'm not picky. You come wherever one you want to come to. Here he comes. Nice. Not a bad fish, I don't think. Too big to keep, most likely, but just not a, a trophy. Not a trophy. Nice though. Well, another nice like 20 incher. He's flaring heavy. He's mad. He's like, put me back. And we will. We will. He soaked my glasses. Feels like it's just such a spoon bite right now. So I went back to the ice winder here, the pink chartreuse glow. And I have a new little toy here from Ice Hole Power Box. They sent me a glow cup. I've never done the, the glow stuff a lot. I don't know why I haven't, but this one's a super sized one. So it's really good for the big tube jigs and stuff like that for lake trout fishing. I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's whip it out and try it. I'm going to fish into the dark. And I had just literally glowed that spoon up, saw the mark drop down and boom. Okay. We're glowed. We're glowing. So yeah, it's a super, it's a bigger one. Ice hole power box glow cup hooks into USB C. I think it's called, which is so ideal for me because I have so many batteries and charging stuff with me so I can just keep it right here and there's no reason not to be using it. Oh, there's, there's just more fish up here. I'm glad I made the move after all. Like, I'm just seeing more traffic up on top of the shelf. So I talk, I'm not sure if I showed it before. So I'll zoom out here a little bit. So right now I've got this shelf. You spin it around this way, it drops off. And I'm at the top part of it here before I was down in the bottom section and I moved up to the top part of the shelf and you can see it kind of plateaus a little bit here. 
there's a fish coming in right now and uh, here as well so yeah i think the move was probably was was the right play just didn't didn't go as well as i wanted it to some bigger fish coming here maybe oh yeah oh come over here that's a bigger one right there he's at 15 feet away that's a nice fish there's one in the front of him i don't want that one i'm gonna pull away from him i want the back one He's, he's right there. There's two nice ones. The biggest one's going to my live minnow right now, though. He's going right to my live minnow. I don't want to move too much. That's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Eat that live minnow. If not, come over here. Come to my spoon. Come to my spoon. Or eat the minnow. I don't really care. Either or, buddy. You choose. I think I'm gonna get that live minnow beside me on a bucket here right away. Yeah, he just he just ate it. He just ate it. He just ate it. I'll just dip down towards him for a bit here. Oh, I was my bail was kind of open a bit. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. Not with not that my bail was open, it wasn't set up. That's a nice fish. Not huge, but nice. That was the one that I totally had my eyes set on when it was coming in. Biggest of the day for sure. The move maybe paid off. Ooh, come on, come on. Easy, easy. Early ice is the worst. Bigger, I just bigger, I would just go for it. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even question it. I would just grab them. But I'm trying not to, try not to hook myself too bad. That's a nice fish right there. And there's some other ones coming too, so I'm gonna go, go quick with them. I'm gonna measure them, but I'm thinking about 20, 25 ish, maybe. Maybe I won't measure them because there's other fish coming. Mm, 24. 24. Beautiful fish. Nice. The live minner. Um, he shot right back down. I'll just keep this out right here. But yeah, I'm gonna get that live minnow set beside me on this just so I can grab it easier but I'm using that jackknife jig I'll show it off right away I do like it though make sure my minnow's still alive yep he didn't kill my minnow my minnow gets another shot okay so what's a jackknife jig new this year from Acme and I'll pull out a bigger one I'll pull out a quarter ounce even though I'm using an eighth ounce one just so you can see it's a little bit bigger but it's it's a jig that swivels this way back and forth this way here so the live minnow has room to swim and you got an option of like hooking it here like tail hooking it in that little tiny hook or i've been nose hooking mine right now just on the bigger one and he's just cruising around like this full movement that way jackknife jig it's gonna be really really good for live bait in my opinion uh, not just minnows it's going to be good for leeches as well possibly even night crawlers i'm thinking like a 1 8 ounce jackknife jig under a slip bobber open water season it's going to be lights out like in the past i've always run like a weight up further but then you have that awkward swinging motion all the time but i think a 1 8 ounce jig when you're fishing a little bit shallower is so good for something like that that hook set was awkward because my line you have to really watch if your line is sitting outside of the little line collector area here and then you set it it can lift that bail open and makes that that snap so make sure you set your line where it should be that was a hundred percent my fault with that one. Oh, something's coming to the live minnow Looks okay-ish. Maybe an eater? He's straight up on it right now. That's funny. It's a bunch of little fish in here and it's always coming over to the spoon. 
<laughs> he took a look at the minnow and the minnow wasn't doing what he wanted. So he come ate the spoon. That's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Oh yes. That is awesome. We are crushing fish right now. This is good. Yeah, he got like straight vertical on that live minnow and it wouldn't do what he wanted. So he come over to the spoon and just crushed it. <laughs> Should I grab you? Should I grab you? Should I grab you? Okay, I'll grab you. I'll grab you. I wasn't going to grab him. I got, a, I got a hook in the roof right now. And yeah, another about a 23, maybe 24 again, but I think 23. Beautiful fish. Healthy. And I got a hook in the roof. Oh, oh. That was cool that was cool like i said it's zoomed zoomed out so the fish are going to look bigger or zoomed in i should say so the fish are going to look bigger than what they were earlier just because now you can see a little bit more detail probably as well might be another eater here got fish coming in Oh, he's charging at the spoon. I don't think he's very big. But I need some eaters yet, too. Just drop it down. Here it comes. Oh, 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 oh. This one's bigger. This one's bigger than that one, anyway. See how that fish totally scared the other one away? Like, this thing just come charging in. <laughs> Man, these are all nice quality fish today. Like, geez. Okay, 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 okay. That fish inhaled that spoon. Like, gone. Gonzo. Another quality one. Wow. Nothing like big, big at all, but just like quality fish. Oh, it's on my minnow. Yep. insane right now oh my goodness that's a big perch and i'm shallower now so i can let him go even getting it done today perch and walleye smash fest oh prime time baby i talk about it lots There's a big one coming here. There's a big one coming right here. Come from up the shelf. Come on, all these little guys are gonna scatter. Come on. Come on. Come on, right here. Oh yeah. Come on, oh, it falls charged it. Turned, no, 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 no. Come back. It didn't eat, come on. Get back here. No. That was big. No way. Hopefully that wasn't my shot. It just, oh, are you kidding me? I never ate. Oh, are you kidding me? It just come in, I thought for sure it was gonna eat and it just, it didn't, it just, it charged it pretty quick. It came off the, the deeper shelf. It came from like right where I was basically. Nope, 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 nope. I could catch a lot of these small fish if I downsize or even just fish for them. But as soon as they start to come at my bait, I just pull away. I don't want to get handcuffed where I'm reeling in a small fish and a bigger mark comes in. A lot of times when you have a bunch of small marks in the area and there's a bigger fish away, he'll investigate, right? He'll see a bunch of commotion over there. He'll come check it out. So I just, I like to pull away when there's a lot of small fish on the screen from those fish as they dart at my spoon. Play more of a, a keep away, like don't let them get it. Now, if I wasn't catching any fish, I would obviously catch some of them, but I've caught a lot of fish today. Now I'm looking for like a jumbo, right? Or anything even like 20 inches plus, heck, even some more eaters. But the fish on the screen right now are like 
are tiny little guys, right? Like little, little. This one's a little bit better right here. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. No, you don't like that? Take it down to the dirt maybe? Down on the dirt? Pound it down there? Come on, go down there. There's another one coming on the right, which I don't really want that one, I don't think. He's so tight to the bottom though, I can't tell for sure how big. Oh, I donked him. I donked him. Pretty sure the one on the right took the swing at it and messed it up for that other guy too. The other guy was a medium guy. Like, if it wasn't an eater, it'd be just a little bit bigger than an eater. Oh, what we got here? This one? This one's look a little bit better. Maybe. Yeah, that one's a little bit better. That one's... I'd catch that guy. He looks like an eater. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. This one looks a little bit better. Come on. Come back. Come on. I was going to go up. He was pretty into it as it was going up. So, come on. Come on. Come on. That was cool. See, I just waited until a better one came around, right? Like, wasn't interested in the smaller ones. Just waited till a bigger one or a better one. This one's not huge, but he's bigger than what those other ones were. It's nowhere near the mark or nowhere near the size of that submarine from earlier, though. I'll tell you that much. A lot of times these fish will group together, so there could be more fish in this size coming in right now. Even there's, it looks like there's one coming on the live minnow that's decent. I'll just let him turn around if he can. No, because there's a fish on the live minnow. This guy can't quite turn himself around. There, he turned himself around. <laughs> and yeah, the one on the live minnow is actually a perch. I could have grabbed that guy, but just not, you know, not a huge thing. It's like another 20, 22, 23 inches. And instead I ended up with a, a jumbo perch right there. My camera's not focusing, there we go. Okay. Well, I've got no bait down there right now at all. Got to get my spoon down and then my live minna. Oh, that fish doesn't look bad. That fish doesn't look bad. That one does not look bad. Oh, I'm trying to get my other bait out of the water. This one did not look bad. I don't know if I got a great hook set on him. Just another nice fish. Wow. This is like lights out. Nothing's huge, but it's good. Okay, quick show off, not measuring them because there are so many fish down there. I'm trying to get my spoon back down there too. I shouldn't have pulled it out of the water earlier. I should have just let it drop, but I wasn't sure how big the one that ate the live minnow was at first. Well, I've been waiting for a smoke show day and uh, we're, we're having it. This is nothing like huge, but hammering fish, hammering. Oh, what's this? That's a little bit better. Again, another one of those 20 inches, right? <laughs> Crazy. What a day. What a day. Bites good. Definitely going to start using the tip up outside during the slow part of the day more often. And then when I get in the shack, I can fish two rods like this when it's like hot and heavy. We're just able to cover more water. If it wasn't for having the tip up out earlier, I might never have moved shallower, which ended up being better for me. It's, I think it's just a smart decision. The finicky fluor is gonna be getting a lot more use for walleyes in the future, I can tell. Oh boy, oh boy, I was just gonna pack it in. But this one's smaller. 
I think some of the smaller fish have moved back in. So I think, I think I'm going to pack it in. The sun set over an hour ago already. It's, it's dark. It's really, really dark. We're going to end on the biggest fish of the day right there. Giant. Crazy day. Lots happened. Almost busted this camera in 18,000 pieces. I can't believe it's actually still working, but I'm going to get another one on order. It's like a $2,500 camera, but I should have a backup anyways. Thank you so much for watching. This video was all over the map, I'm sure. And don't forget, get outside.